Hi everyone, this is Niharika and I welcome you on behalf of YLCC. In our series of interviews, today we have with us Utkash Srivastava and Ruben Tong from Symbiosis Law School, Pune. Uh, they recently won the Best Team Award in the ninth edition of the RML NLU International Mediation Competition organized by Dr. Ram Manohar Lohia, National Law University of Lucknow. We have invited them to share their experience with you all today. So without a further ado, let us begin with the session. Uh, before we approach uh, by the questions, uh, if you could introduce yourself to the audience, starting with Utkarsh. Hello, everyone. This is Utkarsh Shavasta. I am a second year law student in Symbiosis Law School, Pune. And uh, I wish all of you a good luck for your future ambitions. And that's for the introduction. Ruben, over to you. Uh, thank you, Utkarsh. My name is Ruben Tom, and I am in my third year. Uh, I am pursuing my BA LLB honors and I also am from SLS Pune as uh, Niharika has mentioned and I was one of the, as Utkarsh and I were the team, I was a negotiator in the team and Utkarsh was the mediator in the car, in this team and again I wish all the best to all of you who wants to pursue this. Right, uh, so how would you describe the competition journey mostly focusing on the preparation stage of it? Okay, uh, so Niharika, talking about the preparation stage, as we all know that ADR and mooting are two different things. So preparation for the ADR was very, not to that point of the mooting, but yes, we have to be very serious about any competition we are participating in. So this competition of ADR, RML, NLU, so we were very serious about it, although we were uh, uh, we were busy, both Ruben and I were busy with our college fest, Simba. So we were not able to sit together and prepare for the same because all had we all of us had some commitments. So we were preparing on our personal level as this competition was different from other mediation uh, ADR competition. Uh, like uh, other competitions have two negotiators competing, but in this competition we had one negotiator and one mediator. So as we were time bound, we were very restricted. We have paucity of time, so we prepared for our roles independently. And then we would uh, had a we had a discussions uh, on one day at a point of time so that we could discuss and we could you know help each other out in a better tier for, for framing better issues and for you know preparing uh, in a different way. And secondly, if we talk about the preparation model of the competition, so as a mediator, I was most focused on speaking less because the mediator's role is to you know mediate and facilitate the negotiation process. And talking about Ruben, as far as I have seen, it was more of, you know, uh, preparing the all the sides. Uh, you have to put forward a table. You have to put forward a proposal which both the sides are feeling respectful of. Both the sides are feeling agreed upon. So that is what we prepared for, basically. Secondly, we had explored all the options which we had in our mind for the, uh, for the proposals. We had five different rounds the pre round uh, preliminary round 1 preliminary round 2 then the quarter finals then the semi finals and the final round so we had different propositions we have different problems for all the rounds so we had to prepare for each round in individually so that was the basic how we went about it and uh, ruben if you have something to add to it i'll sure i'll ask you to please add yeah, thank you, Utkarsh. Uh, I think Utkarsh summarized what our preparation was. Again, we had a lot of commitments, but <clears throat> that's what a competition is, right? The amount of how much you sacrifice for the competition. So uh, at least what I did was, again, the mediator's role, the negotiator's role is completely independent from each other as uh, in terms of preparation. So there's nothing that Utkarsh and I could have prepared together rather than just making sure that each are each other's aware of aspects about the proposition so like if there are like certain uh loopholes for me when i can negotiate my side uh utkash would come and tell this to me or if there's something that utkash should keep in mind while uh mediating i could have mentioned that to him so that's the only preparation that we could have helped with each other but in terms of individual preparation um there's nothing more than just basic sense of just understanding what the proposition is right because if you are comfortable with every aspect of the proposition there's nothing that can shake your confidence from it because if you know inside out there's nothing the if the opposing counsel mentions something to you you wouldn't be like caught okay i don't know what this is 
So that confidence, if you keep reading, so uh, at least what my seniors, at least we had our own strategist and we mentioned them to them. Uh, at least when I talked to my strategist, my strategist told the first thing before you even read the proposition is read the rules and regulations. That's the most important thing. Get yourself familiar with how the competition is going to go forward. Get yourself familiar with how, uh, how many minutes is for each segment how much can you talk how much can you not talk what are the different language terms you can use what the terms you cannot use what should be exactly your mindset going forward when you read the rules and regulations you'll sort of understand it second thing is again reading the problem at least like at least five to six times i would say is very essential um and the biggest confidence boost that anyone can have before going to any competition like this is having a mock session, right? So if you just prepare on what the proposition is, you're not going to be aware of how exactly it's going to happen. So if the mediator is going to start, uh, what do you say? He's going to start with his opening statement. What exactly should be there in your opening statement? So you should just have some sort of mock session with seniors who've probably done it before. Or with if you there are the, if there are even YouTube videos who have these like sort of mock sessions. So having yourself, getting yourself familiar with, okay, first is my opening statement, second is your opening statement. Then my, then my, what do you say? What are my issues? What's the agenda of today's discussion? So if we can just sort of make yourself familiar with that i feel like that's the biggest confidence booster you can have and then everything else uh i just both kush has already mentioned it i don't want to repeat so one more thing which i wanted to put forward for all the audience who are listening to us is that when you prepare for any competition be it moot or be it uh, atr any competition you should also focus what have you said if you were on the opposing side because then you know what arguments are going to come in forward you know to your presentations and to your proposals. So for a true winner or for you to be successful in any competition, it's not just important to look how you prepare well for your side. You have to prepare for other side also, like what can come in front of you while you are in a situation of crisis or when you are in a situation of standoff. So that is necessary. And in the mediation competition, in the negotiation competition, apart from facts, you have to also understand what our opposing counsel or what the opposing client is intending for. So for that, you have to listen and you have to go into their emotional aspect also to have a successful win and to have an upper hand in that competition. That's all I wanted to add. Right. So usually in these competitions, it's a pair of negotiators and then a mediator. But like you said, it was different for this competition. So uh, on what metrics were you judged on and what was the preparation strategy? Uh, focusing on the negotiator because uh, usually it's a team competition. Even for the intras, if you're participating, it's a negotiation a team competition. So uh, there's a role demarcation, right? These are the aspects which one team member will be handling and those are the aspects with the other one. So what was the preparation strategy regarding this? So the preparation strategy, if we talk about it, like, yes, it was in our intra-college rounds also, we were the negotiators and mediation, media, role of mediator is very, is seen very less in competitions. So the preparation strategy, as we rightly discussed before also, that we were uh, preparing on our individual ends. But yes, uh, as the role of negotiator, as we have done in, the, in our college also, we, uh, I, uh, Ruben, correct me if I'm wrong anywhere. We just prepared for the proposition part. We, we were the councils. There was no client alongside us. So there was just a negotiator and just the mediator. And we had different uh, segments for uh, judging both. Like for mediators, we have different school sheet and their uh, marking points for negotiator. We had different. So as I was the mediator, I'll share with the mediator part. And uh, Ruben, you can share with the negotiator uh, points because you were well prepared on that. So, uh, Niharika, would you want me to start with the mediator first or would you want for uh, Ruben to start with it? Because your question explicitly mentioned about the negotiator. Yeah, Ruben can take over for now. And I have also prepared a question for the mediator especially. So, you can okay. take up that. Sure, sure. And you can always sure. add in if you want to add something. Um, thank you, Kash. Uh, yeah, so now in terms of preparation, how exactly was my mindset going forward before the... Uh, so our team was able to reach uh, at least a good milestone, at least reaching the, we, we as we won the best team award. So it was a cumulative points that both Utkarsh and I had to score. Uh, but at the end of the day, it is, it is uh, for, at least for this competition, uh, you would be marked individually. Um, so based on your individual performance. Now, what exactly was the preparation? Now, it is important to understand that whatever you say in terms of 
how exactly you're going to get what your client wants is very important, right? What type of language you use. Now, at least if I could go, if I could like sort of go back to the time before the competition started and I could just tell myself one thing, I would tell at least to all the people who are listening to us, remember that ADR is not a competition of how much you've prepared. Rather, it's it's a test of that too, but also it's a test of your personality. Because you can prepare how much ever you want, but if you're not thinking on your feet and if it doesn't suit your personality, you're not going to get through. Unfortunately, that's how it is. At least for me, that's how it was. My, see, my personality was more of you know, being calm, thinking of listening to the situation, because that is what gives you points. If you sort of something catches you unnoticed and it's like it's like catching you unnoticed and if the judges see some sort of uh, fright in terms of how you react, your points are going to be deducted easily because that's not what a council would want, right? So if you can sort of be the listening side, if you can be, you know, welcoming, okay, I want to listen to your side, but also you're willing to negotiate your side. I feel that, so again, ADR is more on your personality and your uh, sort of listening skills. That's what's the most important thing, at least for how I prepared. Now, how, now, at least for us in this competition, your I mean, almost for every competition, your CI will be released. Your confidential information will be released just a few minutes prior to your round. Now, when you, so when at least I received my confidential information, I would sort of, sort of deduct of what exactly my client has and what exactly my client wants, right? After you deduct that, then comes your strategy of how you go forward and what you want. Now, in some rounds, my client sort of did some sort of mess up and it was sort of an apology that you know, I had to do from my client side. Now, how do I get what I want from my client side is using the emotional aspect. Because if you don't use the emotional aspect, you're not going to get through. Because sometimes your client might have the biggest mess up and you just have to use emotions as your way. And honestly, I can say if I'm looking back, I was a little bit extra on how I reacted. That, but that was just because of emphasizing on what my client wants and because that is what judges are looking for how are you representing your client are you emotionally attached to your client are you representing your client because that is what judges want to see and again after my after rounds got over the judges then questioned us okay what is your strategy what was the reasoning behind why you asked this question what was the reasoning behind why you pursued this path so now how i strategized was basically i looked so first i tried to deduce what exactly is my opposing counsel's confidential information what exactly is their intent and you can sort of understand that when you sort of just have a clear mind and sort of just try to read them when you read them and listen to what they're saying you can identify okay this is their confidential information and this is what they want can i come to a compromise where i can sort of sort of sacrifice something where they can have and they can sort of sacrifice something for my end when you have that sort of thing then you can like completely when you deduce what the ci is you can understand okay this is it you can easily directly go to the solutions and that is what negotiation is right we don't want to look at the facts of the case okay this is what happened this is what you did this is what i did no we want to look at the solutions so when you look at the solutions the judges will also be like okay they are more solution oriented they are not just <laughs> going to go argue on the facts so when you just you know just throw out solutions okay this is what i can do this is what you can do we can come to a compromise in this and this and this judges will also be okay you know impressed okay you know this is what the council council is doing they're trying to negotiate they're trying to you know come to a compromise an agreement and a big no no i would say is don't don't go too much into the legality okay there if there was a question of too much legality this sort of negotiation wouldn't be happening they would directly go to court Right. So this a big no no is saying, okay, uh, what do you say? If like using too much legal aspects into the case. So, like let's say a certain agreement was there. What exactly is the definition of agreement? What are the essentials for the needing of an agreement to be fulfilled in, in the eyes of law? So all of you if you mention all of this, then the, the judges will be like, okay, they're just going into legality. But that's not what it is, right? You have to be negotiating. So again, that's another thing that you should keep in mind. And again, how it was is preliminary round, pre preliminary round one, preliminary round two, quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals. And we were able to at least reach the semifinals. But our cumulative scores were like really high based on our individual performances. And that is why we were won the best team award. So if there's anything else, I mean, mediation, Utkarsh can definitely mention now what his mindset was. Yes, uh, Utkarsh, for you. So I wanted to ask, uh, how was your performance judged? And how does the performance of your co-mediator affect the entire process? Because even if you're ranked individually for your individual performance, it is always dependent on your co-mediator as well. So if you could just shed light on that aspect. 
Yeah, sure. So I was we we will share the score sheet, total score sheet of our uh, competition recently. So I just checked my rank. So my rank was uh, very close to qualifying the other round. But I couldn't qualify because it was completely dependent on the role of the co-mediator. So, for it, firstly, to answer the second part of your question, like how your performance is judged on the role of the co-mediator. So, for that, I like to say that you are marked on the your rapport with your co-mediator. If there is a coordination between the co-mediators together, then you are given plus one or plus two marks for that because judges technically don't mark you for what you say because the roles of mediator is to remain silent and to explain the process majorly. Now, um, my I'll share a personal experience in the round two of the preliminary round. So there was uh, not, I won't call it a standoff between me and my co-mediator, but that person was basically trying to dominate me and I was remaining calm and silent, but that person, now I was speaking, I was explaining the mediation process so before that, I had to make some opening statement. I had to make the parties at ease from my end also, not from her end also, just from my end also. So that person was uh, thought that I forgot that my role was to explain the mediation process. So while I was giving the speech, she continued to speak the explanation of the mediation process. So all of these things are being marked. Uh, judges mark them. So judges think that this is the, you know, there is no coordination between the mediators. So for that. I'll give you a solution also to this because I felt that this could have been uh, tackled or avoided. A big solution to this is when you get the preparation time with your co-mediator. When you have the time of discussing how you want to facilitate the mediation process, you should divide the tasks amongst yourself. You should make it clear that when I'm speaking, please do not try to obstruct me or please do not try to hinder my speech while I'm speaking. And thirdly, you should explain that you are well aware of your tasks and you won't back off from them. So your role, your marks and your individual performance is technically not individual because when you are a mediator and when you have dual model of mediation process, then you have to be, you know, you have to establish a coordination or rapport with your co-mediator. Otherwise, then you will, no matter how well you perform, but your marks will be deducted. So this is what I'll say that... Uh, the role of co-mediator is equally important to your role, firstly. And secondly, talking about the mediation process, you are being marked on the mediation thing. Uh, for that, uh, I'll say that actually in India, we have the initial, the mediation process is in its initial stages. So we do not have major, you know, study documents or laws which explicitly tell how a mediator should act. So for that, I was exploring the Supreme Court's website. And luckily, I found uh, a manual. It's called as the Mediation Training Manual of India. It is published on the Supreme Court's website. So I luckily found that uh, three to four days before the competition. And I was referring to their chapters. It has different chapters. So it explains how a role of a mediator's role should be, how it should not, how a mediator should not, you know, be a part of the mediation process. And rather, he should give it to the negotiators, the councils and the clients to discuss amongst themselves. So I refer to MIT Mediation Manual of India, Mediation Training Manual of India. So that was my biggest help. Secondly, I had a few seniors who, could, who I could reach upon uh, for any help. Like uh, there was this uh, uh, senior from my school. He was a pass out of NLS. So I asked him for help because he's an international certified mediator. So he also helped me a lot because in competition like this, where you do not have experience, where you have not been trained much about the roles, which are very rare, actually. So you need a senior's help for that. So I took his help. And talking about the marking system on what grounds were we marked. So we were marked about how confidently we could establish what mediation process actually is. How can we make the parties comfortable? You know, like... Uh, if they are coming to this sitting table, they have to feel that the mediation mediator is a neutral person. He's not biased to any person per se. So we had, we were marked on that. We were also marked on if we were able to extract any confidential information from the uh, negotiators or not. The role of the, you know, the, the process of putting forward the confidential information and not making it obvious that this is the confidential information is always a tussle between the two sides of opposing party and the requesting party. But we were also marked if we could have taken out the confidential information. 
we were also marked at uh, if we were calling the caucus the independent session which is which we call it a separate session uh, independently you know if we were able to call that caucus session at a appropriate time if we were able to extradicate any standoffs or impasse if they arise so all of these there was a full sheet which on which we were marked and basically to them so i guess this is an answer to your question like what are the roles of the mediator dependence on the co mediators and marking scheme so we were marked on all of these criteria which were given to us and uh, one thing which uh, before uh, ending my um, you know experience i would like to say that is uh, no matter how what marking criteria they give yes you have to abide by them but uh, at some point of time you will feel that it is necessary for you to present, go outside the box and do something else so for that now this is very circumstances based i am not saying that in any competition you go and do this outside the box and you end up you know getting less marks i am not saying that but if you feel if your gut says if your instinct says that is majorly very important thing if your instinct says that you have to do something which is not written and you have to go outside the box then i'll say please go because i did that in my rounds and that helped me a lot there was a standoff which was coming between the negotiators and at that point of time i technically i suggested something to the both the parties and because they were not coming to us uh, you know a, a cooperative uh, solution so i had to suggest it and i knew that both the parties are there are there is less chance that both the parties are going to agree to it but still i had a gut feeling that okay let's make a suggestion to them let's make a you know let's put forward this idea and luckily they agreed upon it so if something happens of this sort if you think that you have to go outside the box and your gut says it please go ahead with that because that can give you good results so that's all i like to say arika if it's anything else you want to ask please let me know no oh, wonder you won the best team award it was wonderful it was a wonderful wonderful session thank you for being here and interacting with us uh, and i definitely am very sure that the audience will uh, benefit immensely from your experience I on behalf of YLCC wish you all the best for your bright future ahead and thank you for the session once again. Thank you.